students at my house. It's a bit weird, isn't it, not going to school and having videos as your lessons, but I hope you'll feel welcome here, even though you're not actually here. We can learn together still, and you can comment on the videos underneath, and I can write back to you about the things that we're talking about. And a lot of lessons will probably happen in here. This is my study where I I don't really do much work actually. I'm pretty much just do my hobbies in here. So you can see my microscope is over here. It's one of my three microscopes actually. <laughs> it's my favorite one at the moment, but I keep changing my mind. And I've been using it to look at all the samples of sand that you have collected me over the last three years. So on this shelf here, you can see all these little bottles and each one of those bottles has sand in it from a different beach. And I catalogue them and I make slides of them and I'll show you all of that in the coming weeks. But we'll also do some other experiments too. You'll be making some things in your own homes, I hope. I'll be telling you what equipment you need and it's all really easy stuff to get. And I'd love it if after you watch these videos, you could go away and try some of the activities that I recommend. And also I'll be asking questions and you can answer those after you've watched the video too and we can chat about them together in Google Classroom. So I'm sorry that we can't be at school and I can't teach you in person and I'm going to miss the conversations where you tell me things and I can answer straight away and you ask great questions. I'm going to miss all of that but we can make this work and we can do this online. So watch out, watch the videos, answer questions, write anything you want to write and I'll try and answer them in the next videos. So welcome to my place and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Today I'm going to be talking to you about creating your very own science journal. The first thing you need is just any notebook that you've got lying around your house, right in the front of it that it's your science journal. Now in this video you can see at the, I've flipped to the back of the book and I'm actually starting with a list of ideas of things that I might want to learn about or write about in my journal. So you might like to do the same thing. You might have a particular thing that you love learning about. Maybe it's rocks, maybe it's insects, maybe it's chemistry. And in the back of the book, you could have a whole list there of things that when you get the time that you might come back to. It's a little bit like a writer's notebook that you might have at school, just a way to keep track of ideas. And then later on, when you have a moment to do some science, you can look at that list and say, oh yeah, that's right. I wanted to have a bit of a look at animal bones. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today or something like that. So as you can see here, I'm making a list actually of ideas for Science at Mrs. Max House show, which hopefully we'll be doing in the coming weeks. On the front page of my book, I just put some little reminders of things that you can include when you're doing a science journal. The first box there says, ask questions. And that is the first step for every scientist. Look around you, see things in your life and then ask questions about how they work. And that leads on to the second one there, which says notice things. So you might be outside and you might think, why is that fly kind of flying? And then it looks like it hits a corner and flies in the other direction. You can ask those things, draw pictures, write them down. Then try things out, try testing things, do little experiments, make sure you record everything you do in this book as well look for answers to your questions. So once you've got some questions, maybe you've done some tests, why don't you go and read about it either in a book or you might be able to look online on some websites. A lot of libraries actually have books that you can borrow online now. Next thing, draw what you see. So do pictures of insects, do pictures of trees or things that you notice, uh, things that happen in your kitchen when you're cooking, any of that kind of stuff is another good thing to put in your science journal. And finally, it's a really good idea to go and tell other people about it. Maybe mum or dad or a brother or sister, or you can tell us on Google Classroom too. Chuck your name at the bottom so you know it's yours and we're going to be using this throughout the term. In the next little bit of the video, I show you how to cover a book. If you want to put something cool on the outside, all you need is some scissors, some wrapping paper of some kind, a glue stick. You can use paper or anything to cover it really. Stick the book down inside the wrapping paper. Glue it on both sides so that it sticks really well to the cover all around the edge. Then all I've done here is trim off the edge bits and then I've cut off the corners around the edge of the book. 
so that it's sort of like a triangle being snipped off the sides. These pieces will then be folded into the cover and glued on afterwards to make it. So as you can see here I'm just gluing the edges right around the sides, fold those over and press them down and then wait for them to dry. Once you finish this step you have your very own science journal ready to go. were painting this room the other day and listening to a science podcast and the scientist on there was talking about a creature that I'd never heard about before. My daughter said she had heard of it on Octonauts years ago and still remembered it. It's called the coconut octopus. Now I drew a little picture which is you know super high quality. Here it is, coconut octopus. This is Max tribute and these octopus they kind of I've seen a video of them now. They get coconuts and they hold them under their legs. So it's like they have one half of a coconut on this side and then another half of the coconut on that side. And then they use their little tips of their tentacles. I think I said legs before, sorry, tentacles. And they walk along on the bottom of the ocean holding coconuts under their legs. Then if they get a fright, they grab the coconut and they jump inside one half and pull the other half on top of them to protect them so they're stuck inside the coconut as a shell. It is phenomenal! I'd never heard of this before so I thought I should share it with you today in our uh, interesting science facts that I've just learnt. Alright. Well that pretty much wraps up our first episode of Science at Mrs. Mac's house. It's been really nice to have you come along. So underneath this video, once you've watched it, in Google Classroom you'll find a list of things that I would like you to do before you come back and watch the next video in a couple of days. So those things include making a science journal and that's for every kid in the school and no matter how old you are, get yourself a book, get ready because then you can be putting your science work in that through the term. So that's the first thing. Second thing, if you have any questions science questions or questions about things that you've seen in this video please leave them for me also underneath here because I can answer those in the coming weeks I think that we could have a little question and answer section in the videos too so in the coming weeks there's going to be lots more for you to do on here there'll be experiments I will ask you to do some things written down and some things just for fun there'll be things that you can make there'll be games about choosing which animals, animals make which animal sounds and my daughter and I have even been working on a science in Legoland set that we might be acting out some science videos for you there. So looking forward to all the things that are to come and I'll see you really soon. See you later. Bye.